Hello guys, I am back here again with my second video on the digital SAT guide. I hope that you all have been doing incredibly well. So I made this first video where I shared my experience with the digital SAT and I told that how I scored a 1500 plus on my digital SAT's first attempt. And the response that it received was remarkable. Plus, many students asked a couple of questions, so I thought that it might be a good idea to make a video where I will be conveying some more information on the digital SAT by answering to those frequently asked questions. So without any further delay, let's start with our video. So the first question is that, how long did it actually take me to prepare for the test and what timetable I followed? And I was surprised by a comment where someone said that perhaps I was trying to hide the fact that I have been preparing for the test for at least a year. So first of all, I would like to clarify here that any kind of information that I have shared on this platform up until now or that I will be sharing in the future will be entirely based upon true events and on my own experiences. So you should be rest assured by this fact because I don't think so that pretending about something would benefit me in any way or it would benefit you in any way. So there is nothing that I'm trying to hide here or I'm trying to pretend about here. So like back to the questions, uh, it took me 40 to 45 days approximately to prepare for the test. I started preparation at the end of March approximately and I took my test on 6th of May. So it makes approximately 40 to 50 days. And as far as my timetable is concerned, well, I have never ever followed any strict or fixed timetable in my academic life. Uh, but for the SAT, I studied for approximately, like on an average, I studied for six to eight hours a day. Some days I would study for less than two hours and some day I would study for even more than 10 hours. One thing that I would like to add here is that you should never feel pressurized by the fact that how long it took someone to prepare for the test or how long it is taking you to prepare for the test. Because I believe that this is something which varies from person to person. Some people might require 40 to 50 days just like me, others might require 2 months, some require 6 months or even a year or some might even score better than me with just 2 weeks of preparation. So this is something which depends upon an individual's IQ level or the way he or she has been taught throughout their academic career and his or her ability and agility to grasp the complex concepts. Your only focus should be on your own preparation. Once you have that kind of focus and once you have that determination, then no one can stop you from getting your desired scores. So I was asked this question that what books should I use to prepare for the SAT math and reading and writing part? Well, to be very honest, I used no book to prepare for my SAT. But I did ask some of my friends or some of the people that I know who took the SAT and I tried to gather some information from across the web and I came to this conclusion that some people find Barron's and Princeton Review and Erika Meltzer's book as useful resources to prepare for the test. I have been hearing some good reviews about Erika Meltzer's book recently. Uh, plus there is an official uh, book that is released by College Board itself the SAT preparation book. So if I were in your place and I had to choose from this vast majority of books, so I would certainly go for the official resource that is provided by the college board itself. And I would also suggest you to try and stick to the official resources instead of looking out or preparing from some unofficial resource. Another question that was asked was that what are the QAS reports and how can we access them? Well, QS report is something which stands for question and answer services. And if I were to explain this in simpler terms, a QS report is actually a past paper that is officially released by the college board itself. So I was asked that whether I use some paper based SATs to prepare for the digital SAT. Well, yes, I did use a lot of QS reports and a lot of other paper based SATs practice test and for reading part no for writing part yes and for mathematics part definitely yes like i mainly prepared for mathematics part from the qs reports i told them told this in my previous video as well that i prepared and i practiced questions of the mathematics part from the qs reports from 2017 18 19 20 21 and 23 
So I solved all those questions and this is something which helped me score a 770 on mathematics and that too on my very first attempt. So you can definitely, you should definitely try and use that resource. It can prove very valuable to you. So many students ask me that how can we improve our vocabulary for the digital SAT? Well, I personally believe that building a strong vocabulary is not something that you can achieve within two months or three months. This is something which requires years of practice and it progresses over time. So if you are someone who is planning on taking the SAT later this year or after a year or two, then I would suggest that you should start preparing for your vocabulary questions right away. But if you are someone who has to take the SAT within two months or three months, then of course there are always strategies that you can use to solve those questions and you can try to build the vocabulary on urgent basis as well. So what you should do is that you should use the word coach from Google. I personally use that a lot and it has helped me strengthen my vocabulary a lot. So you can use the word coach thing and then what you can do is that you can go to Google and then you can search a list of the frequently repeated words on the SAT. So you can try and learn those words as well. And one more thing is that you can try and use your free time productively. Like if you are someone who watches seasons in their free time or if you are someone who likes to read books in their free time, what you need to do is that whenever you come across a word that is new to you, you should definitely go to Google at that very moment and try to search for its meaning and learn it. This is something that I do a lot and this has like really helped me in building a good vocabulary. So you should try and use your free time productively like that as well. And one more thing that you can use for your vocabulary questions is the trick for the root words. Root words are very simple. Let me explain this with the simplest example that if a word has the word uh, Benny written in front of it like B-E-N-E -E, then that word most, most probably it will point towards something that is good like beneficial, like benefactor and if there is a word with M-A-L, mal written in front of it like malevolent if there are words like that they are most probably going to point towards something that is bad so this is how you can use this trick of root words to score well on the vocabulary questions. Some students again asked about that whether we should take our own calculator with us on the test day or we should just use the Desmos graphing calculator and there were some students who were also not aware of what a Desmos graphing calculator is because I was one of such students. I had no information about Desmos graphing calculator before just I started preparing for the test. So uh, Desmos graphing calculator is actually an inbuilt calculator uh, on the Blue Book app and you can use it to perform the basic operations of addition, subtraction and multiplying as well as you can use it to solve the graphical questions as well. So first I thought that I know how to use the other calculator and I am comfortable with its use. So I thought that there is no need for me to try and learn this Desmos graphing calculator thing. I thought that I was better off without it. But uh, a few days before the test, I realized that there are actually such questions that you can solve entirely by just writing the equations on the Desmos graphing calculator. You just need to put your equation in the correct format and then it gives you the answer. So this is something which saves your time hugely. So I immediately learned about how to use the Desmos graphing calculator and to be very honest, it is very easy to use. And if you want to take your own calculator to the test center, you can certainly take that. But make sure that the calculator that you are taking for your test day is within the list of the calculators that is allowed by the college board. There's this whole list of the calculators and the models that college board allows. So if you have a similar calculator, then you can take it with you on the test day. I, if I talk about myself again, I used my own calculator for performing the basic operations because I felt like uh, using the Desmos graphing calculator for performing basic addition and subtraction and multiplication was time taking. Uh, so I found my own calculator convenient for that purpose for making the basic operations. Whereas for the questions involving the linear equations and for the quadratic equations, I used the Desmos graphing calculator. Many students were also concerned about the fact that whether we should take our own device to the test center or we should uh, request one from college board. Well, if you have your own device, if you have access to a device, if you have your own iPad, if you have your own laptop, then I would suggest that you should definitely take it with you on the test day. 
because this is something which can help alleviate the test day anxiety like i took my own ipad with me on the test day and i hardly felt any difference while solving the actual dsat and the pressure that i felt while solving the practice test in my own bedroom so if you have your own device it is better for you to take it with you because you will already be familiar with its interface but if there is the situation that you don't have any device you don't have access to a device then you can always a uh, request for one device from uh, the college board what you need to do is that while you will be registering for the test uh, there will be this option there will be uh, they will be asking you about whether you are going to bring your own device or whether you want us to uh, provide you with a device or you are going to borrow a device from someone you just need to select that option that i would like to request to access a device from the college board and then college board will further help you out with all the procedure many students asked me that what was my score during the practice test and did i score the same on the actual sat as well and they were concerned that will our score on the dsat actual dsat will be the same as we are scoring on the practice test well i think that if not same most probably it will fall within the same range there are high chances that you are going to score within the same range like i took a total of five test on the blue book app uh, four practice tests and one the actual digital sat so i never scored the same on any of the five tests i always scored different but the range that my score usually fell was between 1450 to 1500 and the actual my my actual scores were 1500 and 10 so this was the range and i scored pretty close to it so if you are someone who is like scoring really well on the practice test if you are achieving your desired scores on the practice test then i believe and i think that there are very high chances that you will also score your desired scores on the actual dsat 2 so that's all for today i hope that you found this video useful and i think that i have answered most of the frequently asked questions so if you have any other kind of query or confusion you can always ask me in the comment section below and yes this is all for today's video take good care of yourselves and best of luck for your tests and goodbye